Welcome back to a best of three series of professional StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is a Zerg versus Terran, where in game number one, we find ourselves on Oxide. And actually, now that I'm saying that out loud... So here's how it works, right? In, in StarCraft 2, in a best of seven, you don't get to veto any maps. In a best of five, both players get to veto one map. And in a best of three, both players get to veto two maps. Now Oxide, statistically speaking, is one of the absolute worst Zerg maps ever. I don't really know where it's at right now, but last time I checked, I think it was like 59% in favor or so uh, of Terran. So that's tournament matches alone, and then obviously only for the Zerg versus Terran matchup. I'm pretty sure that our Zerg here is the only player that would leave Oxide in the map pool of a best of three. But playing here with the red Zerg drones from Ukraine, we have Bly. Now obviously Bly has always played this game in his own way. He's been playing the game ever since the very early days, and he's been playing actually for a very long time. As of me making this video, he is a 32-year-old, which I think makes him probably the oldest StarCraft II pro gamer. I mean, he's basically the boomer of the Star... No, okay, that's not right. But <laughs> there's no denying that most of the StarCraft pros are a little bit younger than him. And, uh, well, I mean, Bly certainly doesn't seem to show any signs of slowing down. He's always been very good. And he's always been playing this game a little bit differently. Like, already, we saw him pulling a drone right there from the mineral line and canceling a worker as well. And, like, the order in which he gets his structures is just a little bit different. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he's going to trick up his sleeve for this particular map. Because, I mean... I don't think you want to just play straight up standard macro on Oxide. Maybe though, we'll see. Anyways, his opponent, playing with the blue Terran SCVs, all the way from Poland. He's currently 22 years old, he's got a peak MMR of over 7,000. And reaching 7,000 MMR at the professional level is, uh, yeah, it's the upper echelons. Anyways, he goes by the name of Sol. And Sol, as we'll be making this video, is currently 22 years old. Whenever you hear, like, the top-level guys talking about Pyotr, right? I know that, uh, that Raynor talks about Pyotr every once in a while, like, Sero brings it up. Um, they're talking about Sol. So, all of the highest-level players have been, uh... Yeah, they have been, uh, practicing with this man for a long time, and... Even though Sol hasn't had the most successful career so far, there's no denying that he's one of the highest-ranked Terran players on the European server, and he has been for quite some time, so... Maybe one day, everything will click for him, and he's gonna be winning Premier Tournaments as well. I feel like all the eyes are... On, on Clem, right? Or, or for example, on uh, on Hero Marine, right? Those those players have been around for quite some time, and they're they're really really good, of course. But uh, Sol is definitely not much, not far off from those two. He's trying to get the wrap around Sol, that, or Bly, that is rather, with those Zerklings on the Reaper. So far, he's not getting it. All right, so let's see what he decides to go for. First deviation. Okay, he's leaving three drones in gas. He's not going for a creep tumor with the first energy here on that queen. The Zerklings apparently have actually snuck out of the natural. So this is a two base opener. Okay, with a very, very quick lair. I kind of like it. We'll see how this one is going to play out. The Zerklings have snuck out. This is already a little bit strange. The natural is now only protected right here by Brenda. Now, Brenda should be okay, though. I think theoretically Sol could probably get some damage done, but he actually did decide to go for two Marines here. So this is a super safe play here by Sol. Soul's very fond of playing the long macro games. Yeah, going for two... Oh my god, this is perfect for him. Yep, perfect. Um, going for two marines is about as safe as you could open up. So apparently Soul, uh, he is uh, yeah, well aware of this trick that Bly decided to go for. Sneaking out the four Zerklings can become a bit of a disaster. And obviously on this particular map, I mean, you can try and jump up over here. But Karen here is guarding the edge of the, of the creep. She's gonna deny any scouting relatively easily. Anyways, since it is a two base opener and since Sol is going up against Bly, I think he can assume that it's a quick lair. It just makes the most sense. Couple additional gases are coming up. There's no Roach Warren or anything yet. Um, okay, there it is. Maybe he wants to go. That Roach Warren is kind of late, to be honest. If you, uh... hmm, if you want to go for a Roach based build, usually you make it so that you can start up. Okay, the Roach speed upgrade as the lair finishes. Instead, right now, we have a couple of Hellions over here. Scan goes down in the natural, and it actually reveals right there the Nidus network. So Sol knows exactly what's going on. Double bunker already. Okay, I was gonna say, maybe maybe Blight decides to cancel it. So he decides to go for the third base right now. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you're Bly here and you know you've been scouted, that you just, like... Don't go for the Nidus. Is he gonna cancel it? Or is... No, okay, he is gonna cancel it. It looked uh, it looked like he was gonna finish it there for a second, but I think canceling it here uh, makes the most sense. I mean, this is obviously gonna force Sol in a very, very defensive position. He did already go for the third command center. 
And, I mean, he, he put up two piggy banks over here, right? There's a bunker inside of the natural, bunker inside of the main base, second bunker in the natural too. I actually very much so agree right here with Bly. It makes absolutely no sense right there to commit to this. Couple of scouting hellions, maybe? Oh, they're gonna try and roll into the base, but they don't quite see what's going on. Okay, scan right now reveals exactly what has happened. But already, I think this is actually fine for Bly, right? It's not like Bly committed to this hardcore. Okay, let's, let's actually put it like this. At the cost of 50 minerals and 50 gas, and a little bit of lost mining time, and obviously a very quick lair and a late third, um, he forced two scans out of his opponent, plus two Hellions to try to run by. Now, every single scan that you see going down could have been a mule, and a mule mines for like 300 minerals or so in its lifespan, something like that. Um, so, you know, I, I would say that this opener actually has been just fine for Bly. Even though he got scouted, he just forced like couple hundred minerals out of his opponent, or, or potential minerals out of his opponent. And even though he's not really committing to anything aggressively here, it's, uh, yeah, it's cost him very little in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> it must kind of suck, by the way, playing against Bly. Look at this. Huh? The guy is going plus one, plus one. I'm assuming he got roach speed done, yeah. And now he's going roaches with an upgrade that we never really see. This upgrade is called Tunneling Claws. And it allows the roaches to burrow underground and actually move underground as well. It's a bit of a funky, uh, it's a bit of a funky, uh, yeah, unit to go for. I think theoretically Terran should be okay against this. It's just that it's so uncommon that maybe Soul can be caught off guard. I don't know. We're gonna find out here in just a second. Okay, he's already getting a missile tier. Okay, Soul knows everything, man. Soul has been playing against, uh, against Bly for a very long time. He goes for a missile turret in the middle of nowhere. It's not a Muta opener. He knows that there's a, a chance at the very least that his opponent is going to be burrowing roaches around the map. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Bunker goes down over here as well. Bunker goes down on the high ground. Soul is playing the late game. This is the way he likes to play. This is what he's been doing for a while. He's just playing super defensively, thinking he can win if the game goes the distance. And maybe he's going to be right. Anyways, 1-1 one, one is finishing up. Road speed is done. Burrow is done as well for these roaches. One, um... Ooh. Okay, this is nice though for Soul. Yeah. Does he get one of the Raptors? Nah. Well, did he get one? I don't think he did. Oh, no, he did. Okay. Uh, one little uh, happy coincidence as well. He sees the spikes, by the way, on the roaches right now, so he knows uh, that these do have the Tunneling Claws upgrade done. Uh, but one uh, nice little advantage is that the uh, the roaches also heal up very quickly while they are underground. So this is one of the things, yep. <laughs> how common do you see this, huh? Or how often do you see this, rather? Super uncommon. Anyways, one nice little side effect is that you can get these roaches to stay alive for quite some time. Forcing out a missile turret over here is not really going to justify going for the upgrade. But this is definitely something that the Zerg player can get something done with later on into this particular game as well. Yeah, he's trying to push on multiple angles, but it's not happening. Alright, so what is Terran up to? So right now, upon seeing that this is not that big of a commitment from Zerg, I mean, it's just a handful of roaches and ravagers, he has decided to go for the command center, right? The fourth one, that is. So this is Soul playing super defensively, just, yeah, focusing on the macro. Obviously, when your opponent is going Roach Ravager, I like this a lot. Going for Medivac drops makes a lot of sense. Roaches and Ravagers are not nearly as quick as Zerklings and Banelings, and obviously there's going to be very little here ooh, in the way of anti-air in general. Two Spore Crawlers and a, and a Spine apparently are going to be the defense here inside of the main base. I kind of like it. If these three Medivacs, by the way, that are moving on the left are unscouted, this base is dead. Like, Lings and Banes can run over there in time. Yeah, this actually could become a disaster right now. He decides to go for the base. I don't mind this at all. He can probably even kill this command... Or, sorry, this hatchery. An infester here pops out at the 9-minute mark. What is this? I think he can just kill the base. Yeah. A lot of drones are going down right now. And this is what happens, right? When you're playing that Roach Ravager style and you don't have your units in the right place at the right time. The hatchery falls. A lot of drones end up going down as well. Hello, Bly. Wakey-wakey. Okay, he's going to be forced to send some units over here too, but that's 22 drones going down in the blink of an eye. And these marines are not done yet. And this is the big downside. Look at this. Triple drop shenanigans right here by Soul, forcing the attention in so many different places. And uh, these roaches and ravagers just aren't fast enough to get over there. Apparently Soul's like, okay, my third uh, army ended up going down. I'll stim a couple of units forward there. Would love to see a scan in the center of the map. There we go. To get rid of some of that really good creep spread, by the way. So as, uh, yeah, has basically got creep over at his third base, which is very, very annoying to have to deal with. Love this as well from him, though. Goes in with the Liberator. 
I mean, it gets scouted, so a Spore Crawler starts up, but this can definitely deal a lot of damage here in the process. Beautiful moves right here by Sol. It seemed that the early game, it was all about Bly in the driver's seat, right? But now all of a sudden, Sol, in the last two minutes or so, has been, uh, yeah, absolutely smacking his opponent around, right? It's like a, I don't know, it's like a, one of those voodoo dolls. <laughs> it's like, you take damage now, and it's like, perfect. He's, he's, yeah, lost two dozen workers. All right, the creep is now being cleared out as well. Even though Bly has been uh, happily painting the, the creep with his queens. It's not gonna happen, dude. This is so much damage, by the way. Holy crap. Look at this. <laughs> this was looking so good for Bly just a couple seconds ago. Or, well, not a couple seconds ago. Like, a couple minutes ago. And, uh... Yeah, right now we're sitting at 31 worker losses. Look at his army here as well from Soldo. It is gonna start moving forward. It's trying to create a chokehold right on his base. Uh, there are, uh, obviously, infestors here available as well. Infestors have a skill called Fungal Growth. It's very nice. I think what Bly is doing here makes sense, though. Evacuating the base and just trying to get those drones to mine somewhere else. The problem is that while he was previously, like, triple expanding all over the map, right now he's got very little, right? He's, he's forced to make another base in the top left. If that one ends up going down as well, he's going to be in some trouble. Anyways, at the same time, apparently a couple of roaches have tunneled to watch the third base of the Terran. A couple of roaches over here tunneling forward as well. They're going to go past the missile turret, so the Verity Soul is going to pick up on this before they get into his base, which I don't mind at all. That's like me playing Terran over here. That wall makes no sense. Anyways, Planetary Fortress is over here. Missile Turret's over here as well. These roaches are going to have to run for their lives. Ultralist Cavern comes up together with the plus three missile upgrade. This, this whole strategy makes so little sense from Bly. I love it. Like, this is what I mean, right? All the, th the high-level Zerg players, they, they play Zerg a little bit boring, right? They, they play the same styles over and over and over again. And Bly's like, no, I'm, I'm going to just do my own thing. I'm going to do my own research, and I've been successful playing this way uh, for a long time. I don't need to play like everyone else does. And obviously the argument could be made is that like one of the reasons why he's so successful is not because these strategies are optimal. Oh, those blind, or sorry, those balls were amazing. But because of the fact that the opponents don't have as much practice against it. But so be it, right? It's totally fine. I don't mind that at all. Like, you can't really practice for uh, yeah, a style that only one player plays very easily, right? Dealing with Mutaling Bane and Hydraling Lurker and all that, right? It's, uh... Yeah, it's doable, because that's what everyone plays. But something like this, you need to play very, very specifically. Now, okay, you can force some friendly fire out of this. Look at this. Yep. Oh, look at the siege tanks killing each other! Alright, that was a little bit ambitious right there with that last one. Forcing a, a Burrow once again. I think actually a couple of units may have ran over here too. And now all of a sudden Bly is looking a little bit more solid again, right? He doesn't have a whole lot of workers, but at the very least, he's got another base up. That being said, Sol is now sitting at five command centers. Ultralisks are coming up. Like, you never see plus three missile being researched while Ultralisks are coming up as well. He's gotta go plus one melee. All right. Probably will go for the carapace upgrade here very shortly. Now with the Ultras out, though, this Terran player is kind of stuck on Marine Siege Tank, which I really do not like very much against this kind of army, although apparently there are a few ghosts out already, too. He's making two more. Plus three, plus three is just about to finish up, though, for the Terran player. And this is a moment where the Terran wants to fight. So if the Zerg wants to move off creep, that's fine. Unless he gets a massive fungal growth, I don't think it's going to work out too hot for him. Let's see how this goes. This is a lot of roaches, by the way. And the, uh, these roaches are well upgraded. Uh, I don't think you want to commit there. Uh, he's going to try and grab the siege tank, maybe. All right. That was an expensive one. I love the little pickup right there as, uh, as well by Soul, actually. Units in the top left and quarter get cleaned up. Right side base at like the, the 3 o'clock position has been cleaned up too. Or, or sorry, has been acquired here too. But, uh, well, Soul is heading on over there for the cleanup at the very least. Getting rid of some of the creep threat. He's going to find out about this base. Yep. And look at the roaches and the Zerklings, right? They're running. Well, actually, there's no roaches in there. But like these units are running over there. But Lynx with plus one melee not even done yet. They're not going to be able to do much against fully upgraded marines. Ultras obviously can help out quite a bit, but... A strange game, but I like it. Yeah, you can see the, the approach, though, that, uh, that Sol is taking here, right? He's like, okay, I'm going to play a standard game. I'm going to make sure I don't die to anything stupid. I know very well that's what Bly is going to try and do. I will try and just, you know, play this game. For a long one. Now... It's easy to look at this army. Ooh, okay. 
He's gonna get a couple ghosts. Okay, good pickup response once again there by Soul, man. If he loses those four ghosts, actually, I think he lost only one. Um, yeah, these ultras are gonna be so much more efficient. Baneling speed, by the way, comes up right now as well, and Banelings are being, uh, yeah, added into the mix here. So I think this is like Roach Ravager into Infester into a Ling Bane Ultra. Oh, gets a couple of siege. Okay, not bad. Yeah, it's, um, it's a long route to go there, but I guess playing Roaches and Ravagers makes a lot of sense, right? Against weaker players, I'm pretty sure that, um, Bly would have already won this game. Like, he was intending on winning, obviously, with the Roaches and Ravagers, but, uh, yeah, once again, look at them. These can pick up these go- Oh my god, this is a nice successful squad. At this point, all he's trying to do is just trade out these Zerg units for better ones, right? Once again, though, nice snipe there, there by- or right there by Soul. He does not cancel it in time. Ooh, okay. Going after the Ghost Academy before personal cloaking is done is not bad at all. Yeah, Ghosts are very expensive units and they take a long time to build, so picking those up. Oh, wow! Did you see that? An EMP drop? Alright. Well, those Infesters are now without energy. At least most of them are. That's kind of cool. Love this little uh, jump up pad over here as well. Though. That's meant for the Reaper, but apparently the Marines can make use of that as well. Roaches are still picking up a lot of units there over in the natural as they spawn. Is there going to be enough though for the Zerg player to clean this up? He wants to keep that base alive really desperately, but yeah, there's not enough Zerg there in time. A lot of drones once again uh, get picked up, but these Roaches actually have been super efficient. I did not expect that they were going to be alive for this long, but the Terran doesn't have enough units at home. At the same time, ooh, couple of matter mules get dropped? What in the world, Soul? You're not winning this game that hard, my man. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I think that was supposed to be a scan or something. It's a misclick. All right. Matter mules are, are not very common at this level of play anymore. It is the ultimate disrespect. Terran units used to, or Terran players rather used to do that whenever they, uh... You know, felt like they were so far ahead that they, you know, could just flex by by getting their opponent, uh, you know, a couple of mules into the mix as well, or, or dropping a couple of mules rather on their opponent's army. Uh, that's like 600 minerals down the drain there. Not quite what you were looking for, I don't think, Sol, but okay. I'm glad he actually explained that that was a misclick, because that would have been a bit of a jerk move. <sighs> Alright. Shall we have a look right here at the resources lost? Yeah, this is actually kind of sick. Normally, with the Ling Bane style, this is heavily in favor of the Terran player at this stage in the game. And even though Blyas hasn't had the biggest economy here for quite some time, um, he's actually ahead in the supply count still. He's slowly replaced... Well, actually, now he's adding on more roaches again. I didn't think he was going to go back to roaches, but... Yeah, I guess if the opponent is super roach... Or sorry, super ghost heavy, maybe the roaches can actually do just fine. What are you going to do? Snipe the ghosts? Or the roaches, rather? Alright, Terran's also starting to run out of money, by the way. Based on the left side, I mean, this one is still pretty healthy. But, um, yeah, the bottom right corner has not been acquired yet. And these, these other two bases, the third and the fourth, are going to be running out very, very quickly. Zerk doesn't have that much eco either, but he's securing a fresh expansion right now. I would love to see him actually double expand right now, maybe take the base in the top left too, although it's a little hard to say. I love the addition right now of these... Uh, Corruptors as well. Like, in all the, with all the things going on in this particular game, it's almost not noteworthy. But since there's not really that many Liberators, normally we see Zerg players just defending this with just Ravagers. But apparently Bly, I think, has added them into the mix right here to kill the Medivex. And I don't mind it at all. Killing uh, these Medivex drops is, uh, yeah, super helpful. Right now, it's Infester, Ravager, Corruptor, Ling Bane. This is a dangerous Zerg army with a lot of good creep spread as well. Okay, so there's the cloaking uh, upgrade once again for the for the ghosts. Second time around that we're seeing that research. I was actually thinking that this game would be over with 3-3 being done for the Terran player. Like we saw 3-3 being done so much before the before the Zerg, right? But right now, I mean, that uh, advantage has kind of been nullified. I would love to see plus two melee though coming up here for Zerg, but yeah, those upgrades are not cheap. So 150 minerals, 150 gas. I feel like Bly could afford it, though. Look at what Bly is doing, by the way. Right now, he's really hoping that Terran decides to go down here. Luckily, Sol uh, is smelling out the trap. He sniffed out that this is not a good location. Oh, dude. I don't think you want to go there. Okay, he knows that there's army on the left. He already saw that with his previous scan. He knows right now that there's army on the right, too. I don't think you want to go too far. Planetaries are great. 
But they can't outrange these roaches behind the mineral line. I think you can even put them on hold position over there. Yeah, just hit whatever you can when the units do pop up. Yeah, snipes are going to be helpful here, though. Still some lost mining time. Fungal. Okay. Very nice. A couple units end up going down. And here comes actually the Zerg Swarm from the left as well. I feel like this one may be a little bit ambitious. Although that being said, a lot of these siege tanks are clumped up together. They will get picked off. Still a lot of ghosts on the high ground though. And those snipes are phenomenal. Alright, so normally, right? I know some of the Zerg players are, are looking at this and you're like, Oh my god, what do you even do to counter ghosts? In order to counter ghosts, you go Ling Bane. Like, ghosts do not trade well against Zerglings and Banelings. So if Terran goes too ghost heavy... Oh my god. Yeah, Lings and Banes! Oh! They can do very well. Ghosts are phenomenal, though, when it comes to sniping Ravagers and Ultralisks and Infestors and EMPing whatever other energy-based unit that Zerg has. So, ghosts are like the ultimate Terran late-game unit. I like it a lot. I don't know if I agree with six more Ultralisks here. I think I would prefer seeing more Ling Bane. But I think right now, Bly is looking at this and he's like, Okay, my, uh, my army is, is, you know, pretty good. But my eco is not. So I think the way I win this game is with a fungal growth and then letting the ultras close the distance. Because, like, Terran right now has got a new base. It's going to be very difficult to win this game unless you get, like, a really big fungal. So even though Ling Bane is probably the more macro-focused choice, the ultras do make more sense if you do get that, uh, that money fungal, right? So fungal growth here and then ultras running, running towards this army would be, I think, the finisher move right here for Bly. A lot of Zerklings, by the way, are running towards the natural, but... Reinforcing Terra units are over there. Ultras taking. Ooh, just barely not a snipe to the face. Okay, here comes one fungal growth. Pretty decent fight here. Gotta be careful though. Oh, massive fungal growth actually goes down right here. All of the Terra units here get fungled for the most part. Soldo has cleared out all of the creeps so he can split those units very effectively. The Ultras not really making use of their splash damage. And I think there might just be a little bit too much Terra at this point in the game. But what a sick match. Love the fact, by the way, that there's changelings being dropped in the middle of that battle. I think the changelings are there to, like, prevent that Terran army from splitting. Some really cool things here by Bly, right? Let's, let's talk about that, actually, in game number two. Now, by the way, don't get me wrong, Soul played a phenomenal game and a very intelligent game as well, and he certainly deserved that win. But, I mean, the style of Terran that he played in that previous one, we, we've seen that before, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of common. I know I, uh... I'm at the danger of sounding like a, a Bly fanboy over here, but he just played something that we don't normally see. So it started at the very beginning, where he opened up two base with a quick lair, then a Nidus Worm, forced his opponent to scan twice, YOLO in a couple of Hellions, and then even though his third base was quite late, because he, you know, just ended up cancelling the Nidus network there and didn't commit to anything, he lost very little, and his opponent lost a lot of potential, right? Which is already a cool start, we don't really see that very often. Then a Roach Ravager based army would burrow. Once again, something that can easily obtain the victory if the Terran player, for example, forgoes uh, detection, right? So it's very easy for the Terran player to think, okay, it's not going to be Mutalisks. I do not need missile turrets, right? I'm just going to be playing my, you know, my standard army and then all of a sudden a bunch of Roaches in your base. I mean, you saw what they did when the, uh, the Terran army was on the other side of the map. Bunch of siege tanks and a bunch of marines and a couple of ghosts. They basically all got picked up for free. And it's very, very tricky for the Terran player to actually clean that up if they are caught on the other side. So I love seeing that. And then the the unit transitions as well from Road Ravager into Infester and then eventually into Ultra Ling Bane. It's very strange. It's just a, a different type of unit composition. In theory... Roach Ravager into Ultra makes little sense because Ultras have a tendency to get stuck behind those units. So with Ling Bane, obviously, they can pretty much always make their way to the front, and even then they sometimes get stuck. Uh, with Roaches and Ravagers, you have to be very careful, but... Yeah, Bly certainly playing the game once more, as we are uh, used to, a little bit differently than everyone else. Speaking of uh, playing the game a little bit differently, look at this. Very quick spawning pool right here from Bly. Hmm. He knows his opponent is going SCV scout because he saw it with his Overlord, so he's going to show two Zerklings over here. Yep, this is going to indicate that it is going to be a pool first, but it's actually six links, with four of them moving towards the left. <laughs> if, by the way, this Reaper leaves right now, the command center uh, on the low ground is going to be in trouble. So, yeah, that's why I do love this SCV scout right here from Soul. I think the SCV scout will go down, but at the very least, it's confirmed that it's a pool first. If you just blindly sent this Reaper across without first having an SCV scout, uh, these Zerklings could actually just win the game, right? Because if you kill the SCV that's building over here, and then go after the reactor that's building on the high ground, Terran would basically just be, be dead. 
I mean, he did go for a Marine. And in the previous game, he even went double Marine too, which I like quite a lot. But yeah, it's still worth pointing out. So this Overlord right now, by the way, this perfect Lord, right? He's just peeping. Yep, he's waiting until that Reaper inevitably leaves. There he goes. And guess what? <laughs> the Zerklings are ready to move in. Isn't this fun? I, I guess I guess what I like about the way that Bly plays the game is that he plays this game as a strategy game. <laughs> like, let me get this straight. He plays a real-time strategy game as a strategy game. The way that, like, Serral and, like, for example, uh, Raynor play this, this matchup a lot is just by being really, really freaking fast, right? They just play faster than the other guys, and therefore, uh, since they have, like, 5, 6, 700 APM when they need it, they'll be able to obtain the victory just by, you know, being better and faster than everyone else. But Bly is, yeah, playing strategy, which is kind of cool. Anyhow, let us have a look at what the Terran player is doing here. So, classical 1-1-1 one, one, one here from Sol. I actually didn't mind seeing the really quick third command center. I think it makes a lot of sense. But in this particular case, he decides to go for the Viking. I think I wouldn't mind seeing like a, uh, a Benshee based opener. Benshee seems to be very popular. And I think it's good against, uh, you know, especially someone like Bly. By the way, once again, a couple of Zerklings have snuck into the base. This time around with Link Speed. Much quicker than last game. So the lair has already been spotted. Um, I would be a little bit concerned if I was Terran here to go up against a Roach-based push, right? And that's where that, uh, that shenanigans can be super good. Anyways, ooh, a couple of uh, Hellions, though, have snuck into the base since the natural and the main are not connected with creep. This could actually get some work done. Four drones ended up going down so far. Is he going to be able to get another one? Brenda over there did shoot a spine at the, the low HP Hellion. So six SCVs, by the way, in total. All right, once again, we have a Nidus Worm going up, and uh, as well as a Roach Worm. Yeah, I think eventually all of this will be cleaned up, and this is a, a really good situation for the Zerk, right? Let's have a look. Yeah. Four Hellions, and uh, yeah, a couple Zerklings here is not that big of a deal. I, I think I like the Benshee here, because you can deal with a lot of these Roach Ravager-based pushes much easier. Now, when it's with a Nidus Network, I guess that Zerk can bring also the Queens to watch the other side of the map, which could become a bit of a problem. Viking, uh, where is it? Okay, it's killed three things so far, but I think it landed for a little bit. It didn't spot this Overlord in a bit of an awkward position. Normally, it's on the perimeter of the map. I think right now, well, speaking of perimeter, I think it's going to try and head on to the corner right here of the main base of the Terran player. Love this supply depot here, though. Yeah, that's a super critical supply depot right now. It means that Sol could actually get over there, but links are already flooding towards the natural expansion. Liberator in the meantime. Okay, I like this. Liberator is going to be able to get some work done. Pops Brenda and Karen back out. SCVs are falling in the natural, though, and the night is warm inside of the main base will be denied. All right. Man, this is some dynamic StarCraft 2, isn't it? Really, really good job here, though, by Sol. Thinking on his feet. Love that Liberator Aras, and actually the depot in the corner of the main base makes so much sense in theory. But when you're actually playing the game, it's easy to forget, right? Imagine if this depot would have been like, I don't know, the more conventional at the front. Um, then all of a sudden, Nidus Worm would pop up over here, and you have Roaches, Ravagers, and Queens instead of your main base. Good luck breaking that without Stimpak. It's, it's, yeah, it's very difficult to, uh, to make that happen. Anyways. Roaches and Ravagers are still going to be available. Roach Speed is going to finish up here very shortly. Liberator in the bottom left. Okay, once again, Nidus Worm goes up in the back of the main. Ooh, nicely done here. I don't think it's going to work, though. No, like the defense here by, uh, by Sol has been very tight. Yeah, he's been doing a phenomenal job, actually, in this series so far. Uh, playing very defensively. This is starting to look a little bit desperate right now, Bly. I guess the boys are still pulled away from Mineral Lines. Might still be worth it. Liberator over here, though, getting some work kills. And keep in mind, this is different than, like, the majority of the Liberator harass we see in this matchup. This is two-base Zerk. <laughs> this is two-base Zerk. This is not something that you can, uh, yeah, you can afford losing. Roaches and Ravagers apparently decide to now try and pop through the front. Good repair, though, there by Soul, just barely in time once again. Siege tanks, I guess. Wait, did they get picked off? Oh, my God, two tanks actually ended up going down here. No upgrades yet inside of these NG base, but I guess he's not going to be able to start those either. Alrighty. Bly somehow, some way, still snuck in here. Yeah, these are roaches with speed, right? So they're kind of dangerous. 
It takes three corrosive bottles to kill most of these Terran units. So if they morph into Ravagers, that can certainly help out as well. Dude, what happened to those siege tanks? Hold up. So there's a Nidus Worm that goes up in the back of the main. We know that that one gets cleaned up. And then I think these, yeah, these couple of Ravagers are probably the ones that got it, uh, that got the job done, maybe? Anyways, there's two Siege Tanks over here, and I feel like they were absolutely critical in the defense. Nidus Worm goes up in the corner there, Liberator inside of the main base. And I think, yeah, this is where one set of Corrosive Balls goes down. So it takes three Corrosive Balls, by the way, for Liberators to get picked off, for Siege Tanks to get picked off, and all of those other units. Yeah, these Siege Tanks were so critical. There we go. Once again, a couple end up going down. Now it's at the cost. Of all of those Ravagers, though. Or, yeah, at the cost of all of those Ravagers. So that's four Ravagers for two Siege Tanks. I guess that's fine, considering there's now no Siege damage anymore for the Terran. And that's when Bly snuck into the back of the uh, the natural expansion. Gotcha. Okay. Let's see. So I think we were at, like, at, at 7 minutes and 40 seconds when I backed up. Alright, so double energy bay goes up once again. Third command center was produced during all of this. I love that soul look that it is like, okay, I'm gonna start up a third CC. It actually makes so much sense. That being said, I mean, if it's just gonna be Marines, I mean, that's gonna be a lot of dead SCVs if you decide to engage here as the Terran player. Stimpak is done though. Uh, I think cleaning this up alone is probably gonna be okay. Yeah, I love the, the stutter step micro right here from Bly. Trying to force out a secondary stim pack. Okay, he is going to get it, so a lot more Marines will end up going down. 14 SCVs in total? These Liberators have been so critical, man. Imagine if those Liberators did not, like, move out. Then this Zerk army would have looked a lot bigger, I think. Bly had to spend a bunch of eco there to, uh... Yeah, to remake those lost workers. Those two Liberators have been fantastic. I was talking about... I was talking about Banshees. Well, apparently Sol indeed knew better than me. Are you still not done? I feel like you're done, Bly. <laughs> He's like, nah, watch me. I feel like you're done, dude. He did make a third hatchery during all of this. Okay, one roach in the front to soak up the siege tank. I like it. A lot of Ravagers coming up. Dude, Bly's looking at this and he's thinking he's got enough. If... Oh my god. Well, this could get awkward. He just loaded up an entire medevac full of units and there's a lot of Zerk right now at his front door. Rose of Bowls on the first tank. Okay, a couple of other random corrosive balls as well. Marines decide to now return back home. He's SCV hunting, man. Can he reach that tank in the back? Apparently he can. Yep, that one will end up going down as well. Roaches once again in the front. Ravages in the back. Oh. Saw the medevac going down too. Three balls, by the way, for a medevac as well. It's basically three balls for everything. I think it's seven balls for a bunker. Something like that. Such an aggressive start. Whew, I love it. <sighs> so, yeah, even though the main base and the natural are starting to run a little bit low on resources, Bly has just sent those workers on over to another one. I love that save. Phenomenal save right there by Soul. Keeps the siege tank alive. This medivac wall, or sorry, this uh, supply depot wall over here, by the way, has been super nice too. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of corrosive balls spent on... Uh, yeah, getting that uh, out of this game. Also, by the way, a little bit of detail. Yep, once again, pick it up, pick it up. Ah, oh, you gotta pick up this time. Uh, once again, a little bit of a detail. He's also morphing into low HP roaches into Ravagers, because the Ravagers do spawn at full health. Anyways, here we go. Once again, Bly is looking to see if he can overwhelm this base. This time around, Siege Tank will stay alive, although one Ravager right there tiptoed forward and got the final bile done. There's still a lot of Marines, though, and I think there may just very well be enough for uh, for Salt to push this back. Uh, push it back uh, once again. 14 more roaches. <laughs> oh, okay. He pops into the safety there of the worm. Okay, another worm goes up over here. Man, this is sick. The problem is right now, right, for Soul, yeah, he's got third command or he's got the third command center done. Yeah, he's got a lot of eco because of it, but he's got no mineral patches to mine very soon. Only a handful of minerals remain inside of the main base, and a natural is going to be running out very quick. He needs to secure another base here soon, and obviously that's what Bly is trying to do, right? He's trying to create like a, uh, yeah, a halt on that expansion here. If the third cannot be acquired, Soul is going to run dry very quick. 
Is he gonna bypass the fourth altogether? I actually kinda like it. Yeah, just go for the for the throat. Much better move. There's only so many roaches and ravages available. If you can even kill the Nidus network, I wouldn't mind seeing that, to be honest. If you can kill the Nidus network, that would be kinda nice. Anyways, at the same time, Bly is committing to watch fighting his opponent. That siege tank is as good as dead. There you go, it does go down. At the same time, queens, though, are gonna be available. Drones are still, for the most part, alive, so I think they will probably be cycled on over to watch that newly acquired fourth. Bunker's still alive. 15 SCVs end up going down. I think this may actually be okay, though, for Blight. If he can kill the Medivac, okay, one Medivac goes down. I think this may be okay for Blight because there's still no third command center taken right now for Soul. Huh. What a game. This is really sick. I think if somehow, some way, Soul can stabilize, this would be okay. I'm just starting to look a little bit, like, his minerals are starting to look very, very, very low. Now we have Zerg basically doubling his eco as far as the work account goes. Plus one, plus one comes up. Dude, I think this is what try, oh, what Blight tried to do in game number one as well. Okay, well, this is nice. Finally, Soul has got a little bit of uh, breathing room, right? And this is fantastic. Yes, that's what we want to see from Pyotr. 13 drones end up going down just like that. You're not in the right place at the right time. You lose a lot of stuff very quickly. Oh, he might even kill the freaking base. Really? Nah, not quite. Right? Well, that's close. I almost feel like you kill your own expansion at this point and just, like, remake it, because... That one's gonna go down here sooner or later. I think you guys pop back into the worm. Yep. Uh, really? Well, I thought you would. <laughs> I like how he's still maneuvering around here. He's trying to force another stim. Yep, he gets it. Uh, there you go. They're all gone. Same time. Ooh, a couple queens apparently did transfuse the base up a little bit more. <laughs> I don't think you want to inject too much though, man. I still feel like that expansion is going to fall here very quickly. Okay, 1-1 one, one is finishing up for the Zerk. Yeah, Bly, uh, okay, so I like I like the first 10 minutes of this game or so for Bly, even though it was very, very close, could have been a disaster. Right now, this is looking better again for Soul. These last couple of minutes have been, yeah, really quite good for a Terran player, especially now that he secured the low ground base. Pretty sure this is unscouted by Zerk, yeah. He doesn't know about this. So with the third command center like, right now landed, this is looking better and better right here for our Terran. Those couple of medevac drops have been used. Uh, huge, by the way. Now, once again, the creep spread. Look at this. He's spreading creep backwards. The queen right there is now connecting the creep backwards. This position over here, though, is going to be super difficult to break for the Zerg. I don't think there's enough roaches and ravagers. No, I think you have to give up that position. Good call there by, uh, by Bly to uh, abandon it, but even better call by Soul to go in for this kill. Love it. At the same time. Ooh. Queens are taking a lot of damage. Yeah, Bly is obviously paying attention to what's going on over here. Also, already concerned with a big drop going into the base. This expansion here, oh my god, the low ground fourth will end up going down? I mean, he's gotta pick it up. He's gonna have to pick- there you go. He's just waiting. Yeah, and all of a sudden right now, look at this. Even though a couple minutes ago, Bly was like two bases ahead of his opponent, right now, we have Sol one base ahead of our Zerg. Don't forget about the Nidus network, though. Since the Terran is expanding out onto the map, all of his defenses are further out into the map as well. Nidus Worm in the back of the main base can still be a problem, but luckily here for Soul, he gets it. <sighs> Roaches once again, though. Ooh, I almost feel like they could have fought that. Yeah, I think they could have, but a lot of Terran units are coming from the low ground. I think it makes sense, actually, that he didn't commit there. Even though he probably could have won the fight over there, all of these roaches would have gone down, and that may have very well triggered Soul to once again start venturing out. Well, maybe it doesn't matter. Here's Tunneling Claws again, together with the Burrow upgrade, so Bly apparently... Yeah, very happy with that. Medivac? <laughs> Bly thinks he's playing basketball here, man. Except the net is moving. Yeah, look at this. I like this a lot better. Look at this! Once again, the roaches! Uh, can I go through this? I think they can. 
Yep. This is awkward though, man. I love these little roach like run by. So cool. Couple of the units are left on the ramp as well. Siege tank will get picked off. There's no way that base will live. No cancel on that one. Is there enough for Soldo to just straight up win the game here? Because I do not know if there's not just the oh Brenda. Uh, I do not know if there's actually enough Zerk here to defend. Yeah, this little counter attack is fantastic. These roaches are paying for themselves. Like they're worth they're, they're worth their weight in gold. There you go. That's a good English idiom, right? I, I like that one. Anyways. Roaches and Ravagers are spawning here. A lot of drones end up going down here. A lot of corrosive balls, though, are actually connecting right now, too. A ton of Metavex have fallen. Are there going to be enough? Oh, my God. Is there actually enough Zerg right now to clean this up? Corrosive balls go down in the middle of the siege tank line, and actually, this will be killed. Wow. <laughs> Here's the Infester. What a cool style. Yeah, this is sick. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of the, yeah, more conventional Zerg style, and I, I, you know, I personally love seeing the long drawn out macro games of like standard Zerg versus Terran with like Ling Bane and Lurkers and Hydras and Mutas and stuff going up against Marines and Siege Tanks and Widow Mines and Medivacs and draw. Like I, I'm like the biggest advocate of that kind of strategy. Okay, I love that kind of strategy, but I'm not gonna lie, this is neat. The fact that I can still be surprised after like 11 years of me watching this game is... Yeah, pretty cool. Look at this. He's trying to kill the siege tank right there with the other siege tank. Ah, oh, siege tank wasn't siege though. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah! <laughs> Look at this! Soul is forced to unsiege the tank so they don't kill each other. And apparently Bly says, thank you! Haha, <laughs> sorry, terrible joke. Um, and he uh, sends those roaches towards the natural instead. They're full HP now, though. They were running pretty low, right? Not bad. Forcing a scan once again. Splitting up the roaches as if they're Dark Templar to try and force a second scan. Not gonna happen, but... Well, maybe it did, actually. Did that scan last long enough to kill both? I don't know. Anyways. Wait, didn't I already see an infestation pit earlier? I did, but I guess it got killed. Yeah, we have an infester out, so there definitely was an infestation pit. Look at these roaches. <laughs> Can he see them? Yeah, Sol sees the little little thingy on the ground. So you don't actually need detection to see that. Like, this is what Sol sees, right? This is his vision. You don't actually need to have detection. On some map layouts, like the sand over here, it's easier to spot them than on others. Sent OP, man. Still, look at the creep spread, by the way. It's so cool. Medivac over here. Yeah, it's not gonna get much done. Ooh! All right. <sighs> Once upon a time, the fungal growth spell from the Infester was a root rather than a slow. So, back then, I mean, getting a, uh, a fungal growth and then a corrosive bow follow-up would have been fantastic. Oh, <laughs> the queen tried to burrow. Not in time, but not bad. Four more Infestors are coming up. Fungal Growth is one of those skills we don't see that often, but it's really quite strong. Two Roaches here. They're going to be able to pick up a lot more Marines than they would in a straight-up battle, right? Because these Terran units get more value as they group up together. Okay, Roaches are heading on over towards the third base. One Siege Tank has been left behind. So even though all of these Roach shenanigans may not be worth it as far as like straight-up battles go, um, all of these little, like... Moves over here are forcing the Terran player to sit back and leave units behind that he would very much so like to have in his main army. Medivac filled up with a couple of tanks. Roach over there still getting work done. This one is going to kill a couple of SCVs. Yeah, not bad at all. Can Burrow get on out of there? Maybe? Anyways, at the same time, the Terran army is once again going to deny uh, the fourth base over here, and that is really quite nice. Bly is starting to run out of money. He doesn't have a whole lot of eco anymore. Only a handful of mineral patches remain. <laughs> How many scans have been forced here by these silly little roach run bys? And this one is gonna require a second scan. It is such a pain in the ass to keep track of all of this. Sadly, these two ro or sadly these two siege tanks here are too uh, too close together, so they don't actually deal friendly fire. Maybe that's actually the reason why Sol is sieging his tanks up so clumped up. I was thinking that's a mistake, but maybe he's doing it on purpose, right? Because, I mean, corrosive balls can connect very easily on multiple siege tanks if you group them up together like that. But obviously the, the siege tanks won't be doing friendly damage to each other. Look at that, the siege tank there did get killed. 
Burrow gets them out of there. I mean, it could force a scan. Yeah, and Bly's okay with forcing a scan. 17 SCVs there? Did I see that correctly? Yeah, he's adding on new ones right now. So few workers, actually. Only 35 drones. Look at this shit. Oh, that's so sick. Okay. The main base, though, has floated on over towards the fourth base. And this is really nice. Yeah, those mules, they have been fantastic. They should be blinked out in gold rather than yellow, man. Give them a gold paint job, because they're the ones keeping this Terran player in the game. Without it, I mean, this, <laughs> this player would have been super dead. Alright. A little bit of damage being done. Alright. <laughs> the other roach was like, pick me, pick me, I want to die too. Let me help you kill the siege tank. Yeah, if you can trade two roaches for a siege tank, that is a phenomenal trade. Look at it, here he goes, here he goes. He's gonna unburrow over here. Boop. Ah, oh, it's too close. Yeah, the siege tanks are clumped up together on purpose, it must be. Okay, new base will be acquired. Darren, though, upon seeing that the army over there has moved, he's gonna try and move over here. Don't forget about the fungals, though. Fungal growth is very dangerous. Okay. Fungal? <laughs> Fungal could have been huge there. Okay. Well, he decides to uh, load up some units here. Rose of Bowls maybe on that one. Oh, okay. Good bot or good fungal there. That being said, this is still yeah. It's such a such a flimsy Zerk army, you know. Okay, good control right there. Stimpak does allow these uh, Marines to run fast enough to get out of the Biles in time. Most of the Infestors just get picked off, and all of a sudden Bly's army is looking awfully split up. There's really not that much remaining. That being said, I mean, once again, a couple of annoying roaches are gonna move on over towards the third base. This expo on the left will never finish up. Fungal growth, though, is gonna connect here for at least a little bit. Not bad. I think you gotta leave this base alone, man, but he needs this one. Like, he doesn't have a whole lot of money. Roach is still available, though, on the other side of the map. Constantly counterattacking, right? So, the problem is, with these corrosive biles and these infestors with their energies, they're, like, this This is such a difficult position to break. So Bly, even though he knows he can't take a head-on fight, he's constantly counter-attacking here with the Roaches, and he's getting a lot of work done with it because he knows the Terran doesn't want to push up onto the creep with all of these corrosive balls and those freaking infestors. What a game. Even if this is a Zerk loss, I love this, man. Like, Pilter is doing a phenomenal job holding on. I feel like many a weaker Terran player would have already crumbled under this type of pressure. Because who plays like this? Nobody plays like this. Here comes the Nidus Worm again. This is a super stressful game to play as a Terran player. And the fact that, like, Sol is, uh... I mean, Sol is used to playing long games, by the way. He loves playing long games, so he doesn't really mind that, but... I can't imagine the average ladder hero, at the very least, they would have just gotten destroyed. Oh, love the missile turret over here. Such a random position, but it's really nice because that's the path the roaches have been taking for a long time. All right, now all of a sudden, though, yeah, we're talking 25 drones on four mineral patches. Literally four mineral patches. Apparently, all of the Zerg units, upon seeing that the Terran is taking up a, a stand at the bottom of the ramp, they have moved on over to watch the other side. Takes a while for those units to pop out. But this is, I think, the game, or, or sorry, the army that Bly has to win the game with. Alright, what does Sol do upon seeing this army? Is he gonna go home? Okay, no. No, 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 no. Okay, he's recognized that this is the Zerg army that was defending the top of that ramp all this time, so he's moved across. I think, actually, as a Zerg here, or as a Terran runner, you try and kill the Nidus network to make sure they can't go home. I wouldn't mind seeing that at all. That being said, a lot of SCVs are going down here as well. More drones are being picked up as well. There's actually no more income right now for Bly because he's lost the hatcheries and all of the drones are now also gone. I guess there's still one lair remaining. He does actually get a good fungal over here. Picks up a couple of the units. Wait, is Bly doing this? I mean, there's still a base here on the left. There's still a base here on the left. Massive fungals once again, by the way. ay yeah, 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 yeah. These roaches can take these fights. That's fine. They can take that. A couple of siege tanks on the high ground, though, helping out as well. 
There's still a scan apparently available. That's fine. He's going to once again uproot the units. I think the real money right now in soul or for soul rather is this base on the left. Yeah. Oh, apparently he did save a couple drones. I didn't even notice that. He popped them in the night as worm, I guess. <laughs> uh, he's fighting. He's fighting for all he's worth. But I think that soul just has a little bit too much, right? Yeah, Bly has got no income. He's got absolutely zero income. And Soul does. Has he seen the base on the left? Well, he's seen it now. He sees that there's long distance mining happening over there. So he knows that the SCVs are returning those minerals. They're gathering somewhere. Uh, you know, uh, and, and he knows because of that that there is another base out onto the map. He does still have some good energy right over here. Couple investors and a dream. It's just Marines right now on the production tab and a couple of Medivex. It's not like Terran is rich here. He's only got 28 workers. If he can get one magical fungal, maybe this is doable. Okay, this base is starting to burn. But I think, yeah, Soul just needs to buy a little bit of time. If he buys a little bit of time, this is manageable. Empty Medivac drop. <laughs> I think it's a Medivac scout, actually. Yeah, this is it, man. There's nothing. There's nothing. Roach is coming in from the back. Does he have enough? No, no way. Okay, good fungo over there. Oh, siege tanks are forced to unseed right now because of those roaches once again popping in from the back. But there's just not, like, there's not a whole, oh my god, there's not a whole lot of Terran, right? Nah, there's too much Terran, though. Even though there's very little Terran, I think there's too much. My god, Bly. You're making it really hard. Man, Soul is playing his heart out, by the way. It is pretty much impossible to be flawless in these type of games. Even though it looks like the command center, yeah, it's not gonna burn down. Yeah, even though, uh... I've been uh, cheering for Bly here for a little while, right? There's no denying that uh, Soul is playing a phenomenal game. Really nicely done here. Ah, I guess it still shows to us at the very least, right? That there are still... There's still undiscovered... Uh, there's still undiscovered strategies that... Uh, yeah, are certainly very viable. This is awesome. Look at this, man. Soul doesn't even know the scenario he's in right now. He is playing extremely cautiously against a Zerg player that has five Ravagers and six Roaches. Like, he's got very little. But he's still so careful. <laughs> yep. I can't blame him. The Roaches over here on the left once again get so many kills. My god, what a game. Look at this. This has been a low eco game and we have near 200 workers killed in total. Nice fungal. This game is over, right? Isn't it? Zerg has had, like, no income for a couple minutes now. And for some reason, he's posturing here and maneuvering around the map as if he does. Look at this, there's 50, yeah, this game is over. There's 52 Marines. That's, like, even if you take the biggest fungal to the face ever, there's absolutely zero chance that Terran loses this. Right? I mean, he's gotta take a big fungal if he's not careful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gets the follow-up fungal, too. Yeah, there's no way. All right, here we go. This is it. This is the final stand of lie. He GG's out. And with that, it's Soul that obtains the victory in this best of three series 2-0. Two, two, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. Also, make sure to check out my second YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash more loco. There's a link down below in the description of this video, or you can click the little portrait on the screen right now as well. It's basically a channel where I post completed games that I've streamed on Twitch. Anyways, for now, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.